Come little children, I'll take thee away Into the land of enchantment Come little children, the time's come to play Here in my garden of magic Welcome foolish mortals Today we are talking about a very, 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 very important Halloween film and it keeps growing in importance as the years pass by with Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus was released in 1993 and just like with Nightmare, it is the 25th anniversary of this movie this year and it's finally getting presents. It's finally making its mark. And I'm really happy about that because it is a really great film. This was directed by Kenny Ortega. He could actually do some good movies back in the day, but now he has the entire High School Musical series behind him. There have been rumours of another movie. Right. What's happening? Is there another movie? Are well, you working on one? You mean, the, I, I hope so. I mean, I think that the Disney Channel and the Disney Company are interested in doing a High School Musical 4. We'll just call it that for right now. And we have a really, really fantastic cast. We have the Divas, Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker. All three of them are amazing, and they really, really, really play their characters well. We are playing very funny witches. In Disney's comedy thriller Hocus Pocus, a trio of 16th century witches returns from the dead in modern day Salem, Massachusetts. We also have Doug Jones, who not that many people know, but he's a really humongous character actor. And more recently, he was known from Guillermo's del Toro's The Shape of Water, and he played the fish in that. And then we have Sean Murray that plays Thackeray Binks, who I adore. But the voice of Thackeray Binks is by Jason Morrison, which I never knew. And we've talked about him so much this year. He has so he's done so many things, especially with under Disney. And is a really big voice actor that I didn't realize because when I first knew about Jason Morrison, I knew about him from Boy Meets World. Hey, Jason. Hey, you're not shooting hoops just like that, are you? No, oh, I got a bail in a game today. Something kind of came up. Oh, let me guess, and I'm just pulling this out of the air here, a certain senior girl named, uh, Vampira? <laughs> Desiree? Oh, that's her day name. And his appearance is from Boy Meets World. So, he's a lot more of a well-versed actor than I originally planned, and it's really cool. Now that I've gone back and watched this movie again after seeing it probably like 50 or so times, I still really do love this film. It's a really fun Halloween film, but when I actually went and studied it, there are a lot of questions and concerns about the film. There's a little bit of plot holes, but then after doing research, some of the plot holes got cleared up, so it's not as bad, but I feel like this is very similar to how I feel about Hercules. It's not a perfect film. There's a lot of flaws in it, and there's a couple questions that come up that could have fixed the whole situation. But for nostalgic reasons, as well as it's a fun Halloween film, it really is a fantastic Halloween film. And they did a great job with it. The only other concern that I have now, especially for the past couple of years that I have been trying to study Wicca and learn more about witchcraft, I really do despise the stereotype that they give that all witches are evil. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Who, me? I'm not a witch at all. It is based on historical events with the Salem Witch Trials. Obviously these are not real characters, but the Salem Witch Trials did happen and everyone thought every witch was evil. But besides that, <laughs> witches are wonderful and they're just goddesses and I'm really tired of seeing the devil placed against witches because it's not and they're actually really good and really spiritual, but Winifred does mention 
that Allison's a white witch. So it does make up for a little bit that they do include that in there, that there's the white witches and then there's black witches and they do the black magic and that's what the Sanderson sisters do black magic and white magic is great, but that could be a whole rant and lecture and I'm still learning a lot, but <laughs> when you're actually involved with it, it does take away <laughs> from just enjoying it. It's a really nice throwback, but it's still classic at the same time. It's even though it's set at a 1993, not that much has changed and it is very timeless. The characters aren't the greatest but they're kids, they're teenagers, so at the same time, you can't really blame them for their decisions, and we have a really great story. I really, really love Thackeray Banks. He's amazing, and I will one day probably have a cat and name him Thackeray because oh, I love him so much. You know, Banks, I'll always take care of you. My children will take care of you too, and their children after that. And theirs, after that, forever and ever. And that was a plot point that was solved because you question why couldn't he just talk if he could talk, but then someone did mention just on, while I was researching, I saw a comment saying that even though it's not mentioned, Thackeray could only talk after the candle was lit and with only those that were involved. So those did solve up a lot of questions I had. Why couldn't he tell the townspeople that he's been cursed? And why couldn't he talk to the mother? But it makes sense if it was only the magic was what was kept within the room and who was involved. So at least they cleared that up, so I, I thank them for it. <laughs> Overall, I really, really do admire the screenwriting. So we have three people that are involved with the writing of this movie. We have David Kirshner, and Mick Garris who did the story and then Mick Garris did the screenplay along with Neil Kubert. And I want to definitely shout them out because this is such a well-written film. I really, really do admire the dialogue. We have so many amazing quotes that came from this film that people still use today. We have so much merchandise with these quotes on them and it's just iconic. It's such an iconic film. It really has become so much greater than when it first came out and it's still thriving. I feel like today it's thriving the most than it's ever did before. And Disney is finally knowing that people want more of the Sanderson sisters and they're giving it to us and I'm really grateful for it because the Sanderson sisters are amazing divas and I love it. I mean Sarah. I, I love Sarah the most. Yes, the book was there. Mm -hmm. You better you were here. Sarah, you were in the back dancing idiotically. And the book said, yes. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yes. Oil of boil mm -hmm. and a dead man's nose. <laughs> dead man's toes! And Sarah does have her song with Come Little Children, which is really pretty and very mystical. But of course we have the iconic I put a spell on you. Hello, Sarah! That is always my favorite scene. If it's on television, I'll just put the movie on and literally just watch the movie until we get to that scene and then I'll turn it off because I've seen it enough times already, but I just live for that performance. It is the best version I've heard of I Put a Spell on You. And now I am very, very, very grateful that Disney came out with a show featuring that performance. Back in 2015, we got the Hocus Pocus villain Spelltacular during Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party in Magic Kingdom Orlando. And I was really grateful to see it in 2016 and it is one of the most amazing shows you could ever see. It's so much better live compared to just seeing it on video and it definitely makes the party worth it. I mean the party's fantastic as it is. I really, really do love the Halloween party and we'll go anytime I get a chance to. I've only been twice, but this show is one of the best decisions that Disney has made and it is fantastic. Meg! Meg Weirwin! Is it obvious? We're back in the living world. The living world? Yes! Don't you 
but it's sad. No. Who are you part is the magic power within this kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. Let me I smell children. <gasps> children! <laughs> There's so many of them and they're dressed mm. funny. As soon as they start singing the song, everyone just cheers like crazy. Yay! So they party all night! It's the witching hour! I really do love how they were able to incorporate all the villains, including my love Oogie Boogie that we're gonna talk about much more when we talk about Night Before Christmas. And just the elements and the story is very well done. So I do appreciate Disney what you've given us and that they finally have realized how iconic this film is and how huge a fan base it has. Not only do we have the show at Disney World, but we also have an exclusive merchandise line that's at Spirit Halloween stores as well as Spencer's, and they sell some really nice products. I haven't bought any of them yet, but they're really nice and I do like them. And they also have the exclusive costumes that you can get, so it's just it's honestly a such an iconic movie and even though it has its issues, it's still amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, you need to watch this film. It's one of the best Halloween films. It's one of the funnest Halloween films that we have out there today. I don't have too much merchandise for Hocus Pocus because they just started getting on the bandwagon a couple years ago. But I do have my little pin that I got in 2016 for the show and it's really, really, really nice. It has the three sisters on here, and they're with the cauldron, and it says, Pocus Pocus Villain Spectacular 2016, so it's nice that it has a year on it. But even though I just have one item of merchandise for Hocus Pocus, we're gonna have an entire haul when we talk about tomorrow's movie. <laughs> Tomorrow we're gonna talk about The Nightmare Before Christmas, so, you can stay tuned, and as always, I hope you have a magical day, and I will see you real soon. Bye.